Um, yes, sir. I'm James Barber. I uh, am the service owner for end user computing at Jotun AS, and we are uh, head office is based in Sandefjord in Norway. And uh, we're a paint and coatings company, so we're based in more than 100 countries worldwide, producing paints for kind of marine, protective, decorative, and uh, powder coatings. So we have 65 indiv individual companies, uh, 39 production facilities, pretty much spread across every country uh, you can almost imagine. So uh, we cover roughly around 10,000 employees now. And uh, my team kind of heads up the uh, kind of what we call end user computing devices. So anything kind of Windows laptop based or mobile phones and mobile devices and uh, printing is... Uh, part of that solution as well now. Um, so yeah, the Cloud Journey project started probably back in two, 2017, 2018. Um, so Yoten as a company started looking at kind of cloud-based services on the whole for, for all its IT kind of related projects. So one of the first things kind of we started to do was look at the kind of client devices. We had um, a lot of system center servers on-premise spread across the world. Uh, we basically wanted to kind of strip that back and have a centralized cloud man management solution. Um, so we started to look into Microsoft Intune and Autopilot and kind of managing those client devices from the cloud. So part of that process was we had a lot of old server operating systems spread across the globe and kind of a lot of on-premise hardware. And basically a lot of that was aging also. So the kind of decision at that time was, how can we reduce that on-premise infrastructure, which is aging, which takes a lot of time to manage and kind of requires a lot of patching. How can we kind of take that and kind of move that into the cloud? So that was kind of the first, first step we did from a client, client point of view. Um, as we went on, we started to use, um, as part of that process, using Azure AD to uh, kind of, used for the identity platform. And as we started reducing those on-prem servers and on-prem domain controllers, kind of the, the printing side of things naturally kind of came under the radar. Those same print servers were sat on the same hardware, which was kind of aging and we didn't want to replace. So that was kind of the first, first step, I suppose, in looking at uh, migrating the print solution into the cloud as well. Do you know the project team, did they have in their minds already before you started how long this might take? We did. Basically, a lot of our servers were kind of running Windows Server 2008 R2. So that kind of operating system was coming up for end of life in 2020 <laughs> from Microsoft. So that was kind of the, the drive that we kind of used in the company to kind of really ramp up that process and start pushing towards that end goal. That was kind of the date we had in mind in January 2020, where we wanted all those servers kind of gone. The collaboration with your team was, was excellent. So um, the uh, project lead uh, at the time really made sure that everyone was uh, following the, uh, uh, the plan. And uh, we basically, through the architecture of the Printix, the product itself, um, we were able to very seamlessly transition and snapshot what Yotun were doing today, yesterday, into the Printix cloud, and then sort of seamlessly, you know, connect the rest of the world site by site and uh, migrate across. And um, I think everyone was surprised on how uh, how easy it actually was to uh, transition across, because the uh, the end user experience actually didn't change. Um, so yeah, what we kind of started to do initially was we started with a, a pilot site, uh, kind of like a small, one of our smaller sites in uh, South Africa initially. And we kind of just started in that one location. They were kind of willing, willing and able to assist us. So we kind of picked those as our, our kind of first test group. We uh, pushed out Printix to that, that one location and it kind of went really, really well. So after that point, we have in, in the company what we call our early adopters. So that's kind of a group of around 200 to 250 users kind of geographically spread across most of our sites in the world. And it's kind of made up of people who are kind of in charge of other solutions or kind of IT people. So 
it's kind of a good a good uh, bed of users to to get some good feedback from. So those were kind of our our next next people that we tended to target. We tend to target them with most most kind of testing we do because we know what to expect. They know what to expect to tell us, and we kind of can trust them, trust their opinion and uh, judgment of how things are going. So that was our next kind of test group that we went with, and again we kind of pushed out the Printix client using Microsoft Intune which went very, very easy. It's a really simple and easy process to do. And that kind of made its way onto those clients almost instantly. So that enabled us to bring those kind of 200 users online onto Printix almost instantly. So again, that was a quick and easy process. They were on board and using Printix without any, any real training. It kind of just seamlessly took over their usual day-to-day -day printing technique. It kind of ramped up really, really quickly once we already had kind of client deployed from Intune, it was just literally a case of us adding more and more locations into that application group. And it kind of, yeah, from that point on spread, spread pretty quickly for our organization, but the actual push was just done from one central uh, location from, from the team that was involved with the uh, Printix rollout. So yeah, we didn't need tens or hundreds of people out there running around doing kind of little tasks here and there. It was literally a click of a button and uh, we had the the client out there on all the machines. I think initially the full rollout, I think in around two weeks, we had 60% of all our sites globally moved onto Printix. And then within around two months, I think that figure had hit 95%. So it's a, a very, very quick rollout to pretty much get all our users onboarded. So yeah, we have, like I say, roughly... 10,000 10, users globally, around 8,000 of those are what we call computer users. because so we do have some people kind of working in production facilities and printers wise, we're looking at around about 1100 printers globally now. So, and that's across kind of approximately 230 office locations worldwide as well. From, from our point of view, we've seen a lot of, a lot of benefits. So obviously we, no longer have those between 70 and 80 print servers to patch and kind of manage. You know, we used to have like maintenance windows where we could patch and reboot those servers when kind of production and people were not working. So we kind of no longer have that side of things. So we're also freeing up what we call our local IT team. So we have a kind of IT people hands on the ground in these locations. Their time's no longer taken up with all that kind of additional work as well. Even kind of like during the rollout, we a lot of the kind of tasks, what you kind of consider with a print print solution, we don't really have to do to kind of have automated queues and driver installations. Uh, users can self-serve and add printers themselves, or they can kind of have printers automatically added based on their location. It kind of just enables us to do things on the fly a lot easier as well. What we've had recently in the last couple of years is new sites coming online we don't need someone there with a server and kind of setting up print queues. We basically, as long as we've got a client a client device on that network, we can kind of detect detect a new network and kind of get people up and running almost instantly with printers. So it's kind of been, yeah, it's just so easy to easy to use and get people uh, up and running. I don't know if your team is also the help desk for for printers and has been in the past, but have you noticed any, noticed any difference? If if it was any difference between the end users and the printer support issues before um, and after? Yeah, yeah. Typically, before we <laughs> weren't kind of directly involved with that, so they, those kind of tickets okay. go to our central kind of global service desk, so they'd field the kind of first line calls, and then from that point on they kind of would get pushed towards the second line support, which is the local guys. Um, kind of a lot of the, a lot of that's kind of gone now. So obviously you've still got the, the issues locally with the printers that may happen from time to time, but the kind of what we call the third line tickets that would now come to my team for Printix, it's quite few and far between. We don't really get many problems with the uh, solution. Anything we do kind of get, we found the, the tech support's been really good. We kind of get through to what I'd consider experienced engineer, engineers who kind of know the product inside out. So you're not kind of chasing backwards and forwards, asking kind of like simple questions. It's 
straight to the point. They, they know the product, they know the questions they need to ask and yeah, things get resolved very quickly when, when there is an issue. It's like I say, it's few, few and far between from, from what we've seen. A quick question. You actually had completed your rollout and deployment probably uh, uh, some time ago and then the pandemic hit and a lot of people were gone home so maybe not printing as much and you couldn't maybe see what was being done there but was how did you handle uh that situation uh, last year um yes yeah, that's uh, a good question yep so we kind of found doing our cloud journey project kind of prepared us quite well for the pandemic so all of our users had a brand new laptop it was kind of cloud-based, so we weren't reliant on VPN connections anymore. We didn't really have many on-prem resources that we needed to connect back to. So we kind of had Teams and all the kind of collaboration tools already in place. So pretty much going home during the pandemic for us was fairly normal. We were kind of, I suppose, as ready as you can be for something like that. We we don't really need to connect up via VPNs to do that kind of thing. And then obviously adding a cloud print solution on top of that, we didn't really have to worry about people needing to print. So we kind of took, took advantage of the possibility of cloud printing when people were at home as well. So we did have people in kind of production sites who were physically still located in our office locations who could get kind of other people to print documents for them in the office from home. So that was a really big help for us. And again, we didn't have actually have to do anything major to kind of get that working. So that was a, a real big bonus as well. And um, yes, yeah, so kind of beforehand, we did some initial costing based on kind of some Gartner figures of how, how much it takes to run a typical print server. So including kind of obviously the hardware, the software, the running costs, all that kind of thing. And that kind of gave us a figure that Gartner says, this is how much it costs to run a print server per year. So Basically, our project was based on a, a five-year plan. And uh, what we found with the kind of costs of Printix and reducing all the other costs of print servers and kind of all the other work that goes with it, we'd actually returned on our investment within the second year of running Printix, which is quite remarkable, really, when when you consider a lot of uh, projects take, take a good few years to kind of return that uh, investment back to you. We found that probably midway through the second year, we'd already kind of recovered recovered that cost. So we were already in a, a positive situation from uh, the second year. Um, they have, yes, we've kind of taken advantage of a few of the features in Printix. So we kind of by default use a print later function. So print jobs are kind of not just automatically printing out on printers and sat there all day. When kind of like previously, we used to see big piles of uh, print jobs left at printers at the end of the day, and they'd kind of just end up going to recycling. So with those kind of features we've got, we're kind of not seeing that wastage anymore. So we're kind of saving on toner and paper as well. So that's a, a big, big help for us. And then also we've had some sites uh, recently take, take on the uh, secure print aspect of it as well. So we've got kind of print jobs being released securely through a, an app on your mobile device by scanning a, a QR code on the printer. So kind of for, for anyone wanting print print jobs that are not just going to appear on a printer or you kind of need to have that element of control of kind of confidentiality, we've, we've got that uh, kind of solution up and running as well in uh, in the places that need it. Printing, yeah. For printing, we, we kind of keep utilizing any new functionality that we see in Printix. One of the the major ones that we're kind of just starting to pilot at the moment is Printix Go. So we're kind of looking to use the Printix actual feature on, on the actual device themselves on the printers. So people can kind of release print jobs with uh, kind of proximity cards or pin codes. So we've kind of had users coming to us saying, oh, this would be quite a cool way of doing things. They've seen it in other kind of print solutions in the past and we've kind of seen that Printix has now got that option. So we kind of actually got a pilot program at the moment within the last couple of weeks running where uh, someone in my team's actually set that up. And again, it's something that just works out of the box. It takes very little configuration to do. We kind of did the rollout in stages. So we kind of started small and then just kind of ramped that up. So we started off with a, a very small pilot group and then as that was successful, we kind of just made that group bigger each time. So it kind of went to our early adopters 
And then from that point, like say within two weeks, it kind of just exploded and pretty much hit, yeah, over 50% of our locations within a fortnight. So that was really good. Other things that I can kind of recommend as well is obviously bouncing ideas off the Printix team. We had a lot of kind of knowledge from Printix during that rollout that we kind of lent upon. That was uh, really helpful when taking on a, a new solution. I think uh, one um, very interesting element of the project was also the agile approach that Printix took with the feedback that we got from your tune. As we were going uh, broader and the rollout was picking up speed, we, we noticed a couple of things uh, in the product that could have been improved. And we did that during that rollout process, which then made it even easier to uh, deploy the solution. Mm-hmm.